A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him that is weary. Morning by morning he wakens, he wakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been confounded. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I deliver Jesus to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he sought an opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to such a one and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he sat at table with the twelve disciples, and as they were eating, he said, Truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Is it I, Master? He said to him, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. These days of Holy Week always focus on the betrayal, the workings of the interior of the heart of Judas as he plans to betray and to hand over the Lord. And what we see even here in Matthew's Gospel is that this follows on after you've had the anointing of Jesus, the anointing with the costly ointment, the one which then Judas becomes angry at. And he sees this action as a waste. He values the costly ointment more than he values even Christ himself. For the ointment, that was worth 300 days' wages. For Christ, he's worth 30 pieces of silver. How has this happened? This can be the slow delusion in our hearts of what happens after the Lord has called us and maybe after initial zeal has faded. Judas, in his own heart, maybe the initial zeal of his call has begun to fade. And we can see it's got to the point where he's tired of this. He's tired of what the Lord is always asking of them. Maybe he's tired of everything that they're called to give up. And he wants to start accumulating earthly treasure. He settles on 30 pieces of silver for the price of Jesus. If you look at the original Greek, when he goes to the chief priests, he doesn't even mention Jesus' name as it has in this translation. He simply says, what will you give me if I deliver him to you, him? One of the commentators notes that he's not even able to say the name of Jesus anymore. The name of Jesus has fallen from his lips. It's gone. What will you give me if I deliver him to you? the one that he has come to detest, the one that he has come to disregard, the one that he no longer loves, but who loves him intensely. And so what happens is, is that they paid him 30 pieces of silver. What's interesting, if we look in the Old Testament, this number of coins and this value comes up on a couple of occasions. One, I think it's in Exodus. And what it is, is that it's the value of a slave that has been wounded. And so if someone, for instance, their ox wounds someone else's slave, then they are compensated 30 pieces of silver. But also, if you look at the prophet Zechariah, when he is condemning the shepherds for their mistreatment of the sheep, 
He breaks his shepherd's staff, which was called grace, and he demands from them, as God has instructed them, as instructed him, he demands his wages. And they pay out his wages to him. And so 30 pieces of silver is not only the price of a wounded servant, it is also the price of a rejected shepherd, both of which now Judas has done in his heart. He will wound the one who has come not to be served, but to serve, Christ himself. And he has rejected the shepherd of Christ, the one who wants to have authority over all of us and who is deserving of it in his love. But he has rejected the shepherd. He has rejected the servant. And so he takes this 30 pieces of silver and it says here, sought an opportunity to betray him. Then when the Lord is sitting at the table with his disciples, and he makes this profound statement of sorrow, he says, truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. There's such sadness in, that word, in those words. That word you is collective, not for people in general, but for those who are sitting with him at that table. The, one to whom he has been, the ones to whom he has been particularly good, <laughs> the ones whom he has called to himself, who have witnessed all of his acts of love, all of his miracles, all of his preaching, the ones whom he has been so good to, he says, one of you will betray me. And this is what causes him the most pain. It's not an enemy, it's a friend. And they were very sorrowful. They're sorry even at the thought of this. But this shows also humility in their hearts and self-knowledge, is that even though they are sorrowful, they still ask the question, is it I, Lord? Each of them recognizes their capacity to betray Christ. And all of us in this Holy Week, as we prepare for the Passion of Christ, we have to recognize our own capacity to do the same. Sometimes Judas is something very distant from us, but he's not. Judas sits in every human heart. And our capacity to betray Christ is the same. And so they all ask in this humility, is it I, Lord, is it I? And their questions are sincere. Judas, however, will not only betray Christ, but he betrays truth. He betrays his own self. He does not even speak honestly. He says, is it I, Master? The love is gone. Jesus is no longer Lord. He's simply Master. You can see in that statement how Judas now views his relationship with Christ. Christ is simply a Master who wants to govern him. He's forgotten the love. He doesn't see it. And so you have this great tragedy as it now begins to play out. As we now move into the scenes where this betrayal will have its full effect, and the Lord will be handed over. But for us, the point is that we have to see in ourselves the, our role that we have played in the passion and death of Christ, that we still play in his passion and death through our sins, through our indifference. And we also turn to the Lord and ask these same questions in humility. Is it I, Lord, who will betray you today in some way, hand you over today in some way, it may not be as grand a gesture or as big as Judas, but it might be in small things. And so we ask for the grace in this Holy Week to be more attentive to that, to be more attentive to the ways in which we might betray Christ and to ask for his grace to remove that from our life so that we can love him as he deserves to be loved, that we can accept him as he deserves to be accepted, and that we can return to him that love which he gives us. Amen.